Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, it's my pleasure to share our early experience uh, with physician modified uh, fenestration. Uh, all you know that 40% uh, of our patients are considered unsuitable for standard EVA. There are different options to deal with these patients. Open surgery means the cornerstone, as uh, uh, we know also the costs may be cheaper, but uh, this is a debatable issue. Uh, we do a lot of hybrid techniques. Uh, we usually expose the vessels depending on the body belt and vessel level and position through a bilateral to peritoneal, bilateral subcostal or midline intraperitoneal and do the hybrid procedure and this some of our cases and this uh, uh, review article about debranching of the aortic surgery this only center experience this uh, uh, only center experience we notice that there are a lot of variation in the number of cases uh, from each center and the even the uh, follow-up and immediate uh, post-operative results are very variable we are still collecting our data, but uh, we have a mortality rate up to now is 10% with uh, no paraplegia and target vessel occlusion of 1%. Uh, uh, then come Shiva, which have uh, received the CE mark in 2016. <coughs> and this is the famous Protagoras study, which showed that uh, this technique is associated with successful midterm clinical and radiological outcomes, but they asked for reproducible experience from other centers. This could be a cheaper and faster final results in the absence of the neck, but still needs the skills. Uh, it has pros and cons. It's a great bailout and risk. It's available. It's suitable for most cases. It's less costly and better than expected, but type 1 in the leak is around 10% and it's still complex. There are some mechanical problems. There is uncertain long-term durability and lack of strong evidence. Then we come to the Indo anchors and the uh, anchor registry with two arms, the primary implantation and the revision arms, and it showed that this device is safe to be used in this kind of population. Also, we have the thoracic abdominal T branch device <coughs> and the uh, fenestrated grafts, which is designed for short necks, not thoracic abdominal aneurysm, but it requires specific long time for design and planning, and it's very expensive. We have limited experience because it needs at least six months to be delivered and also due to financial issues. Uh, this is a meta-analysis including 11 studies of more than 600 patients showing that only 2% 30-day mortality in these patients and the target vessel patency at five years is around 90%. This is a French multicenter experience including 16 French centers and more one than 130 patients with a 2% 30-day mortality and 1% conversion to open surgery. The same nearly results from the Global Star Registry from UK, which includes 14 centers and more than 300 patients with a technical success of 90% and perioperative mortality is only 4%. Then we come to the physician modified endographs. So the first case had been done in 2001 by John Anderson. It's indicated in high risk morbidity and mortality patients with, with uh, alternative treatment to open or hybrid techniques, it's lar enlarged symptomatic aneurysm or contained rupture if it's enrolled in a physician-sponsored investigational device exemption protocol. It can be reinforced fenestration, many cuff reinforced fenestration or directional branches. This is how to uh, uh, the, do the arc lengthers. I'll present two of our cases which are interesting. This was our first case more than two years ago. He's a male patient, Marfan, had a history of open repair of ascending aorta and aortic valve, presented with type 4 indo leaks. The preoperative CT scan showed that the hepatic artery arises separately from the abdominal aorta, and the planning is to do open surgery. The patient refused it completely, and uh, branch device is expensive, and so we go to visceral debranching to both renal arteries and SMA, and then calling of the splenic artery antiviral with a physician-modified fenestration to the hepatic artery. This is our first step. We, uh, the, uh, then, because it was our first case, we've done uh, a lot of uh, workshops and training in order to uh, find the best way to do it. And then this was the angiogram, the first angiogram. I don't know why it's not working, but it was the first angiogram. This second step, coiling of the splenic artery, and uh, we can elicit the hepatic artery because in our cath lab, we don't have a fusion. Uh, mm -hmm. So we marked its position beforehand. We introduced the aortic stent and partially deployed it. 
and through the partial deployment, we are, have been able to cannulate the uh, hepatic artery. And after cannulation of the hepatic artery, we completely deployed the graft and we ballooned it in order to break the tie reducing suture and deployment of the covered stent. And the final result was perfect, but as expected, six months later, the patient came with sudden onset of severe abdom and abdominal and back pain, and the CT showed dissection extending both proximally and distally to the in both common iliac arteries, and the internal iliac artery on the right side was 3.5 centimeter. We uh, decided to go with calling of the right internal iliac artery antivar, and after a month, this was the follow-up. There is still persistence of abdominal dissection and abdominal aneurysm, in addition to a huge pseudoaneurysm of the right common femoral artery, and we do an open repair of the right common femoral artery and EVAR and IBD, and the final result was okay. The second case is an old male, has all risk factors with chronic stenting six months uh, ago. Uh, this was his first angiogram showing the extent of the aneurysm. And uh, we partially deployed the graft as usual, <coughs> and we cannulated the celiac trunk and deployed the Bentley stent graft in the celiac trunk and we have done the same uh, uh, for the supreme mesenteric artery. And at this time, the patient became hypothermic, 30 degrees centigrade, and severely acidotic, and the anatomist asked us to abort the procedure, and so we completely deployed the, the TVAR graft and aborted the procedure. 12 hours later, the patient became anoric, and we went into an urgent bilateral renal artery debranching from both external iliac arteries. The patient had uh, 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 sessions of hemodialysis for three weeks every other day, and the kidney recovered. Uh, one week after complete recovery of the kidney, EVAR covering both renal fenestration using carbon dioxide and IVAS. And the completion angiography using carbon dioxide was perfect. These are examples of some of our cases. And this is a meta-analysis uh, published in 2020 uh, 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 about this uh, technique. It included 20 studies and more than 900 patients. 63% uh, of these patients were treated in an elective setting and 36% in an urgent situation. The major adverse events at 30 days was 15% in elective patients and 24% for urgent patients. And the overall technical success was 97.2%. They concluded that physician modified fenestration or branch grafts for endovascular aortic repair seemed feasible and safe in, in the short term but the quality of the available data is still low, which highlights the need for better and more accurate data regarding this technique. Thank you, and waiting for you in the next time.